another quick Jacobson problem. So let's do it. So let's see. This is a plane. I assume he means just R2. So let alpha b rotation by angle theta and row reflection. Well, okay. I'm just, the only reason I wrote this out was because I want to give a name to this angle. Then alpha is given by the map that sends r times e to the i theta to, and I'm going to put a line here, which means that this is an element and it's being sent to r e to the i theta plus i phi. And so that which has inverse, well, what would the inverse be? It would have to send r e to i theta to r e to the i theta minus i phi, because if you send, because alpha will send, will add the i phi, then alpha inverse will subtract, and you end up where you started. Rho and rho inverse are given by r e to the i theta, and I'll put on the next line, we'll map to r e to the minus i theta, because it just flips the plane. So, anyways, and, and it's clear that rho inverse is rho, because if you square, if, because rho squared is one, because you flip about the x-axis twice, you end back where you started. So then for any point P equals R e to the i theta, and by the way, in order to include the entire plane, we're letting P, um, R have the value zero. I know sometimes in your, if you're doing things like complex analysis, then zero can be a problem area, and so you avoid it. Uh, also, if you're doing things like, yeah, if you're, if, just things in analysis, uh, when you're doing polar coordinates, sometimes the origin can be an issue. Here it's not, here it's fine, because uh, these, uh, these maps are just, send zero to itself so they behave well so anyways what do we have we want to prove this thing so let's apply um this thing to p so that's going to be rho alpha and then p inverse or rho in rho alpha and then rho inverse of p that's just going to be r e and then it's going to minus the i theta and then alpha What's alpha going to do to it? It's going to add minus i theta. And it's just going to add that i phi up there in the exponent. And then applying rho again is going to flip the signs. So now it's this. Uh, but then we, we just showed that that's alpha inverse. That's that's what the map alpha inverse does. It it adds it subtracts i phi in the exponent. So hence rho a rho inverse equals a inverse. Now you might be thinking, why if if rho inverse equals rho, why do they even write rho inverse instead of just writing rho? The region, uh, my, my algebra is pretty rusty at this point since I'm just starting to go back and review it, but it has something to do with conjugation, I believe. Um, because when you take an element and you multiply it on one side by a different element and by on the other side by that element's inverse, so basically you take an element and then you sandwich it between something and that thing's inverse, that's called conjugation, and that gives you a lot of... Um, it tells you a lot about group structures, and you can um, do things 
involving group theory and stuff with it. It's it's pretty important in group theory, and we'll we'll get to that a ton. Um, but I, I I think that's what they were going for. I think they were just trying to foreshadow um, some of the the role that conjugation is going to play in this uh, textbook and just in algebra in general. So, anyways, that completes this proof, and we're done.